Hi, everyone. Welcome to Olin Data's um, webinar on how to write Puppet modules for Windows. So basically, um, in this webinar, you will be given, I will show you, the, tell you the guidelines on how to write a proper module for Windows. Use, okay, so um, first of all, um, to, before we get started, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Chun Ming. I am from Olin Data. I am the principal consultant of Olin Data, and I deal with all Puppet-related work. Been using Puppet for a long time now, and I primarily use Puppet on on Linux. And once in a while, I have to use it on Windows. So um, the purpose of this webinar is I want to share with you my experience on how to write Puppet modules on Windows. So basically, I would tell you the guidelines and what are the do and don'ts of writing or whenever you want to write a Puppet module for a Windows-based system. So I assume that all of you here are interested in uh, writing Puppet modules for Windows, or at, so you should have at least a very basic understanding on what is Puppet and how Puppet works. So to start off, Windows support in Puppet is only supported through Puppet Enterprise. So in order to use uh, Windows with Puppet, you will be needing to use the Puppet Enterprise. I'll, for the purpose of this webinar, I will be using the Puppet Enterprise 3.7, which is the latest version. And, and then we will, from there, I'll show you how to write a flawless module. Okay, so let's first start off. Okay, so the the first thing that we need to know when we want to write a Puppet module for Windows is we need to understand the the usage of Puppet command tools such as the Puppet resource commands. Okay, so let me get started here I'll show you start sharing my screen all right so in this screen so in in puppet right um, the most essential tool in order to write puppet mo uh, modules for Windows is the puppet resource command okay I'm not sure how many of you actually use the puppet resource command or uh, aware of it so puppet resource command is a command that allows you to actually to inspect your puppet res your resources on your system right using the abstraction layer and return it to you from in a form of a puppet output so let's take an example of this puppet source this will be the command and then you will give it a a resource that you want to inspect. In this uh, example, let's take a look at Puppet Resource User. And what it would do is it will return all the users in the system in a Puppet format. For example, we can see here that we have a user vagrant which is set to ensure present with the proper GID, home directory, password hash, and so on. Okay, it's a very vital tool for us to understand how we can uh, maximize or utilize this command in order to write a Puppet uh, module for Windows. So the, the reason being is because uh, Puppet on Windows is significantly different from a Puppet on Linux. On Linux is very simple, but on Windows, there are a few caveats that we need to, to take uh, note of, okay? So with Puppet with Windows, uh, with this Puppet resource tool, we can type Puppet resource package Apache. HTTPD, and we will we will see that package HTTPD is absent. 
Okay, so this is on a Linux server. So, however, if we were to take a look on a Windows server, on a Windows server, we can use a similar command because um, this puppet resource command is available for both uh, the open source version, enterprise version, either Linux or Windows servers. Okay, user administrator. By doing this, puppet resource user administrator, I'm actually using the puppet resource tool to query for the user resource and querying for the user administrator. With this tool, it tells me that. Um, my user administrator is currently present. It's a built-in administration, uh, administration user for Windows, and then it has a specific UID. Okay, it does not give me my pop, my password, hash, and whatnot because with uh, Windows we are not able to manage the password hash. Okay, so how does this tool actually? help us in our subsequent uh, task of writing a Puppet uh, module for Windows. Okay, let's start off first with um, package. So the, when we want to, to manage something on Windows, the, the very general basic thing we want to manage first will be the installation of packages. Okay, so in order to install the packages on Linux, we can simply uh, write puppet uh, package httpd ensure present but on windows is going to be a little bit different okay so how different can it be i will i will create a module for this purpose Okay, so this is an empty Windows class. So in, in an example here, for Linux servers, we can just simply give the package name and ensure it to be present. And that is all we need to do for it. And then the, the package, when Puppet runs on the Linux servers, the, the package providers will look for this HTTPD package and it will install it. But on Windows, we do not have a package manager as of uh, we know. And what, what we do is we need to provide it with an installer. Okay, so this installer does not have exactly have a uh, package name or um, uh, application name, right? So what we need to know whenever we want to install a package from Windows is the very first thing what we need is the package name. Second thing is this, the location of the uh, installer. And the third thing will be the um, the, ans the answer files or the, the parameters needed to, to install the package. Because uh, in Windows, we, we are used to point and click and filling in parameters. Okay, so let's take a look at how we would do it in here. So in, in here, okay, I, I have a puppet agent installer, which will require me to click on next, next, and put in on uh, my Puppet Master's uh, host name and so on in order to install the Puppet Enterprise on my Windows Server. Okay, so but then again, so how do we actually know how to, what's the name of this uh, package, this application, or 
um, what is the uh, parameters or the location. So this is where when when we use uh, uh, when we want to build a puppet module for Windows, it's very helpful when you have a virtual machine like what I have right now. So first of all, you know, so I want to install the puppet agent on my machine. So I already installed it, obviously, as part of the um, uh, demo, uh, the webinar purpose. But then again, so let's take a look at how the packages are named in the uh, Windows. So by typing puppet resource package, puppet will list down to me all of the packages that has been installed on this Windows server itself. So as you can see here, and you have we have all this uh, package package name. For example, here we have package FFI with ensure version number. Okay, and also we have uh, package Win32 event log with a version number. But this is not what I want. So what I want is this. So I want this package Puppet Enterprise 64-bit. So this, this is the package name that I need in order to install Papa Enterprise agent on this server as well as to make it item potent. So if I would, when, when I want to write it in my Papa module, I will write it as package Papa Enterprise 64 bit. Ensure present. Now that I have the actual package name, so whenever Puppet runs on Windows, it will not reinstall this package because it found the actual the exact name such as Puppet Enterprise 64 bit on the 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 installed program list. So therefore, it mixing it item potent. All right. So this is the first thing that we need when we want to install a package on Windows using Puppet. The second thing that we need is the installation source. Okay, the installation source is very important because we do not have a package manager for Windows. So how do we work about it? So ideally, we will want to have an NFS mount or a Samba mount or a network-based location where Puppet can access the installer. So in this case, I have a network, I have a, I have a network storage and, and this will be my installer file. By, so by using this, then Puppet will install the Puppet agent using this package, this MSI installer, in a silent installation mode. So this is something you need to, to remember. First of all, you need the name of the package. Secondly, is you need the location. Okay, the third thing that you need in order to, to install a package successfully in Puppet is the usage of the install options. What are these install options? So these install options are parameters that you need to pass to your installer in order to install the application or software headless, okay, or in a silent install method without having the user need to, to answer any form of answer and just by not having the need to click on the next, next, and next button. So usually how do we know what are the installation options is we will, we will consult the application or the software's documentation to find out what are the installation option is, okay? For example, I know for one that Microsoft products has a silent install method for all of their softwares. So basically you can just go up into Google or go online and look for 
let's say, for example, a Microsoft SQL Server silent install method. Then it will then you you'll be given a link where you you'll be redirected to Microsoft SQL Server's installation page where you can choose what are the silent installation parameters that you need in order to install the software on your Windows Server. So for this, I will need QN, that means a silent install, I, and then master underscore server, So now, as you can see here, I have given the installation option of forward slash QN forward slash I. So QN stands for quiet, no verbose, and silent. And dash I is, means is to install, whereas Puppet Master Server is the parameter passed to this installer saying that my Puppet Master Server is master.olindata.pm. So by doing so, now when I will to save this and I want to run Puppet on my uh, Windows Server, it will attempt to install the package itself. So of course, um, it would not uh, do anything because the package has been installed already. So, but assuming that it's not installed, Puppet will install this uh, Puppet Agent command, uh, Puppet Agent uh, software with the parameter of Puppet Master Server pointing to master.olindata.vm, and and then it will make sure that the installation will always be there. The package will be always installed using the source that you specify and using the uh, parameter that you specify. Okay, so, and now, so that is the first thing. So while we are still managing the package, the next thing we will want to manage will be usually the services. So I have installed less for, for example, I have already installed the Puppet agent. So what is next? Now, the next thing I would need to do is I want to ensure that my Puppet service is always running, okay? So again, how do I know what is the service name? Because again, like I, like I mentioned earlier, the naming convention on Windows and uh, the Unix or Linux system is rather different. So this is where the either the puppet resource command comes into play, or the, um, the Windows Tool Services .msc comes into play. So if we look into the Windows Services MSC, all right. For let's take a look, for example this DHCP client here. So DHCP client is not the service name. In order to find out what is the actual service name. We look at the properties, and the service name here is DHCP. The display name is DHCP client, but the actual service name is DHCP. All right. So now back to the example earlier. I have installed Puppet Agent. So the next thing is I want to manage my Puppet Enterprise uh, agent daemon. So Let's see. So I see. All right. So now I found this puppet agent. And so my service name is called PE Puppet, but my agent display name is called Puppet Agent. So that is one. If I type here puppet resource service PE Puppet. It will show me that is ensure is running, enable is true. But on the contrary, if I were to put the display name, 
which as we saw on the services control panel here, it cannot find it, right? Because Puppet goes and search for the actual name rather than just the display name. All right, so now that we have this, so what is next? We will add here service PE puppet and sure running enable true. Okay, so I want to make sure my PE puppet service is always running on my Windows Server. So let's test this out. Before we actually test this out, I will stop the service. Okay, to verify this, now we can see service PE puppet ensure stop and it still enables true. So what will happen if I were to run Puppet Agent uh, forcefully? Okay, by the way, um, if you have any questions, please do type out your questions in the questions box and then I will answer them at the last 15 minutes of this uh, presentation. Okay, as we can see here now that we can see so is the service puppet is ensured from stop to running because I specified them in my puppet manifest earlier. Okay, so now that we have managing, we are done managing the um, package and the service. So what about configuration files with Windows? So similar thing, very with Windows and Linux, managing users is a uh, or file is rather straightforward. Okay, so creating a file in Windows can be as simple as creating file TMP perms or ensure file. Okay, but one thing that you need to be careful here is Windows and Linux has a different file path, right? So in our in the Example here you can see is this is using a backslash, but with Linux, it's using a forward slash. This is for Linux, right? So, so what will Puppet do when when Windows has this similar thing? So either you write it in a form of TMP perms or file yeah so if you write it in either way puppet still accepts them all right but you have to be very very careful with your quotation mark because you can only use the backward slash in this in this line is because I'm using a single quote, right? So if you were to use a double quote, then you will need to escape the whole character here in order to make it a forward slash. 
okay so this is one thing that you need to be very very careful of okay with files I would recommend you to either use a single quote with a forward slash or double slash with a double quote okay because you have to be clear on what you want so ideally my recommendation is use a single quote with a single slash just like this okay so now with puppet all I can do is just uh, create a single file like this and it does and then I would not need to do anything unique of course I can manage the permission but I will come into that later okay so now that I, I have the puppet uh, to manage the TM, TEMP perms file, so what is going to happen? So what will puppet do is it's going to create a, a file called TMP perms, okay? And then it will be created at the root directory of the C drive. Uh oh. Okay. Okay, so I actually need to declare this first. So include Windows. So now you can see that TMP perms has been created. So is it the end of it? No. So after creating a file or a folder, we obviously need to work out on some permissions, right? So let's just see what sort of permissions that we have with this file. Let's see, and uh, TMP perms. So I details. Okay, it says the owner belongs to attributes, uh, to administrators, and the security details shows that these, all these users have full control except for the users uh, group. So, but then again, I want the users group to have the full control. So how do I usually, how will we do it with uh, Windows? So with Windows, usually with Linux, you what you do uh, on Linux here, you type in 0775 or 0755. Yes, it will work. But then again, um, instead of doing this, what we would do is we will use a module that comes from the Puppet Forge, a pre-written module that authors have written and uploaded it with Puppet Forge. So what is Puppet Forge? So Puppet Forge is an online collection, all right, of all the Puppet modules that has been tested or built by the public. So, so for our purpose, we will want to use a module called the the ACL module, okay? So what does this ACL module do? So this ACL module do is what it allows us to take control over the Windows ACL 
to its entirety. So it allows us to manage based on the identity, based on the mask, based on the rights that we have, or based on specific SIDs and so on, the permission, the type, whether we want to inherit it from the parent folder or not. Okay, so this gives us a very, very fine grain control over what we want to see in this uh, uh, file for the permissions. So for our case here, Okay, so as you can see, I have a ACL resource here aimed to, to manage the TMP permissions, uh, TMP perms file. Okay, what it does is it gives the administrator full rights. It gives the my users read execute uh, access and it inherits all the parent permission from the root folder. Okay, so what will happen when I save this file and run Puppet? So Puppet will now modify the permission of this TMP perms file that was created earlier. See, as we can see here, right, our identity Windows administrators write full, and then our identity built in users write read execute. So, and our group, what happened here is it changed from Windows none to built in users. So, with with this and the usage of the ACL uh, module that's available on the Puppet Forge, we can manage uh, Puppet ACL on the file and folder levels to a very, very um, uh, extensive manner. Okay, so so that that is one. So what is next with with this? Let me see. So the next thing that we that we have with Puppet is we have limitations, okay? So we have limitations in a sense where we want to install features, okay? How do we actually install features with Puppet? There are no built-in Puppet resource types that allows you to install the Windows features, right? Because in Windows, you will still need to open the server manager, click on the server features or the role that you want, and you will install it, okay? So with Puppet, there are a few ways of doing it, okay? The first method of doing it is definitely through the PowerShell, okay? But then again, Using PowerShell, you need to know all the commands needed in order to, to build this. So for this purpose, right. Now, we can see here I have a, a an exec resource, okay? An exec resource allows me to issue commands on, on Windows. So what did I do here is, what I use here is I was using the Windows PowerShell provider, okay? This PowerShell provider allows me to do a lot of things, right? Because by default, the, the exec module will use the command prompt. And with command prompt, 
you cannot actually manage the server. So that's why we have the PowerShell. So what we need to do in this case is we need to change the provider to PowerShell. Okay. Of course, in order to use the PowerShell provider, you would need to look, you need to install the PowerShell module from the Forge as well. Okay, the Puppet Labs PowerShell module. By installing this module, then your exec resource will now have the PowerShell provider that allows you to do a lot of things. Okay, so let's go through line by line. So this exec install SNMP server, okay, will allow me to run the command to import the server manager module, which is part of the PowerShell libraries, and it will allow me to add the Windows feature as an SMTP server, okay? And in order to make this item potent, rather than having Puppet to, to rerun, to run every time and attempt to install the SMTP server module each time, we, come, we use the only if attribute Okay, whereby we will import the server manager module and we will query for the SMTB uh, serve Windows feature on the PowerShell. And then if it's check, if it's installed, then it will not install the PowerShell module. If it's not installed, then it, then only you will install this SMTP server module. Okay, so here we go. I would I will save this. Windows So what will happen here is I do not have an SNTP server module installed. So just to verify this, roles, I have no roles installed or I have no features installed. So the moment when I run Puppet Agent here is Puppet will actually compile the catalog. After compiling the catalog, it will install, it will run the exec resource to install the SMTP server through the server manager module that comes from the PowerShell. Okay, so just let's wait and take a look. Okay, now we can see here that okay, Windows PowerShell install SMTP server is executed successfully. So let's see, did it get installed successfully? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, I am not sure why this did not install or let me change this up. Okay, so I have a really good question that comes up from John. Um, his question is, let me open it up. How does SMTP solution from Puppet Forge compared 
with using the chocolatey version. You can get this from chocolate install SMTP for dev. That's a PowerShell download give you a better release of the SMTP server. Okay, so this is not exactly um, not uh, how do you say a a, a pref preferred way to install your Windows uh, features. This is just a an example to show you that you can actually use uh, PowerShell to install or run various commands on the on the Windows Server. But to get back to your question, okay, there are some things that Chocolatey could not do. So Chocolatey is more of a uh, package manager for Windows. So what we have is, which I'm going to touch up next, is the usage of the Forge module called Windows feature. Okay, Windows feature is a Puppet module built that allows you to turn on and turn off any Windows feature that you want. So as we can see for an example here, we can just use Windows feature IIS, group it up with a list of feature names, and then Puppet will install it using the either the PowerShell or the API itself. So what I have here, is I have a sample of Windows feature IIS which will install the web server features, the HTTP redirect and the web management console tools. So if I were to side of PP include Windows uh, IIS. Okay, so when I run Puppet, it will install the uh, IIS features as part of PowerShell and Puppet. Okay, um, and then there's another question to use the PowerShell. You uh, waiting us first, we need to install this inside the Windows first. Uh, Windows box first, yes. So it comes with the assumption that all Windows Server has the PowerShell install, and you will have to install the PowerShell module inside the Puppet server itself. Okay, now you can see is the, there is a background uh, installation that says starting installation for all the Windows feature that I selected earlier, which in our case will be the uh, the IIS uh, feature itself, which is the web, the web server, uh, the HTTP redirect, the management console, and so forth. Okay, so it's going to take a while to install. Okay, so the so the next guideline that I want to share with you when you are uh, writing Windows uh, mo uh, Windows module for Puppet, a uh, Puppet module for Windows, is the use of development environments and definitely need of virtual machines like Vagrant or VirtualBox. Because throughout my experience, right, it's, it's very helpful whereby you have a development environment such as this because what we need here is we need to be able to to find out what are the application names we need to run tests on what are the services names we want to check what are the um, the the ACLs needed for the files also we, we need to know how will PowerShell uh, react whenever we want to, to build a module that centers around the usage of PowerShell. Because for one thing that I know is um, writing public modules for Windows can be very PowerShell-centric as 
uh, not all uh, components in Puppet can be um, can can be uh, silent install. Okay, as I uh, as I far as I can remember, there are a lot of applications. For example, BlackBerry based application does not allow you to silent install any of the application at all. I've tried once before whereby I want to install a BlackBerry Enterprise Server using Puppet and using silent installation method. And without testing environment or whatnot, it's, it's rather pointless that uh, we are able, we are, it's rather useless because we are not able to install BlackBerry Enterprise Server on uh, Windows Server using Puppet because simply it does not provide us with any form of silent installation method. Okay, okay. While this Puppet is still doing its job on its background, we can see that it's already installing the IIS servers and the services and whatnot. Okay, so it shows that what we what I defined in my Puppet code earlier already work. Okay. So the next thing that I want to share with you is the usage of this module called Reboot. Okay, what is this Reboot module and why do we need it? How and how is it exactly important for our, our purpose of building a Puppet module on Windows? Okay, first of all, let me uh, come up with a scenario, okay? So whereby when you want to, let's just say, install a application on Windows, there are times that it allows, it requires you to reboot the entire server before you can actually proceed with the next task. Okay. So for that purpose, Puppet needs to be able to know when to reboot the server so that we can actually reboot the server. And then after reboot, when the server comes back up, it will continue with the stars to, to, to stop, to continue where it stopped previously, right? For example, looking at this code here, we have a package installation for Microsoft.NET Framework 4.5, okay? So with the, Installation options of no restart, we tell .NET not to restart after installing the .NET framework. But the reality of the situation is we, we are needed to reboot the server after the installation so that the changes can take place and applications can start using it. So by using this reboot module, we can simply set a reboot after which subscribe to the package or notified by the package. So what will happen is after the completion of the installation of the .NET Framework 4.5, Puppet will reboot the server itself. Okay, so that is one. Second, we want to know whether is there any form of uh, reboot pending before installing the server? Because sometimes, let's just say, it's dependent on a very specific library. We will want to make sure changes are applied to the system first by rebooting the server before installing the next software. Okay, Windows is not exactly like Linux whereby Linux, by installing a package, it can just uh, restart the services and so on and continue with its own work. But with Windows, it requires a lot of reboot in order for changes to take place. So in, in this case, here we set a reboot before when, and then we set the attribute when to pending, meaning that Puppet when Puppet runs, it, it, it would do a check first. If there are any reboot pending prior to 
installing .NET Framework 4.5, Puppet will reboot the server. And then when the server comes back online, Puppet will continue to install the .NET Framework 4.5. Okay, so there are one more way that we can use with the .NET uh, with the reboot module is first we can say .NET Framework 4.5 ensure install and then we will notify reboot after run and we will we can also say this to Microsoft Windows SDK for Windows 7 ensure install and notify reboot after run so what does this reboot after run will do okay so this reboot after run will do will apply when it's finished okay so basically what it will do is instead of rebooting twice after completing microsoft framework and the sdk what it will do is after finish installing frame.net framework and the SDK, then only Puppet will apply the reboot sequence after the entire catalog uh, execution in order not to block each other, in order to reduce the need of multiple reboots. And then that way Puppet will will be able to apply all the changes as we need. Okay, and now, okay, so those are the guidelines that I've uh, shared with you. So the, the first thing first, I just do a short recap is, in order to install packages, first, the most important thing is the, the package name, the location, and uh, the installation option for the services it's important that you understand you know what is the actual service name and not the display name so how do we actually get the package name and the service name again is through the usage of the puppet resource command let's say package puppet enterprise 64 bit they tell me my package is installed or the service PE puppet which will tell me my service running or if I want to know all the services that's available just type puppet resource service and it will list down to me all the services here so it's very useful tool and it's good to know that if you know how to use this puppet resource command because it helps you a lot when you want to build a puppet module and then the next recap will be for the files is you can just manage it with the file ensure file or ensure folder Instead of managing the permission using mode or owner or group, use the ACL module, which gives you a full control and a more granular control over the permission and ownership of a, of a file or a directory. And then next thing will be The usage of PowerShell on Windows is very, very helpful. So if you know what you can do with PowerShell with Windows, that would be great because otherwise I would suggest you to have a, uh, a handbook on PowerShell on how to do things with PowerShell because knowing how to use PowerShell on Windows and Puppet saves you a lot of hassle to where in some cases whereby there are no puppet modules available or there are no packages or simply no resources available 
to do this task for you and you have to rely on the PowerShell. And lastly, is the usage of the IIS module, uh, the, the Windows feature module, where it allows you to install all the Windows feature on Puppet. Okay. Is all these modules you can it can be found on the Puppet Forge, okay? And it tells you what modules that you can manage using Windows and so on. So there are a lot of modules for Windows that you can use, and I rec I would highly recommend you. To use them. For example, this Puppet Labs Windows module contains a collection of Puppet modules that will be used for Windows uh, management. Okay. All right. So, are there any questions? If you have any questions, please um, type them out in the the question box. Then, uh, then I will answer them. And um, there's one question here by Aki. Is there a list of Windows functionality that Puppet is unable to handle? Okay, the answer is it varies depending on which resource that you are trying to manage. So the functionality is very dependent on the resource that you want to manage. For example, if you are managing a Windows user, you only can create the user. But you are you're not allowed, you're not able to to manage the password. If you are managing a Windows user that comes from an Active Directory, you only can manage the specific components like the home directory or the comments or non-critical parts of the user. So how do we know what are the limitations of all these resources? So by going into the documentation of uh, the puppet type references, you you will be able to find out what are the limitations of every uh, resources that comes that puppet can handle. So, for example, for the user resource, we will look into the provider features. Okay, so this table here will tell me which provider has what limitation. Okay. For Windows ADSI, it tells me I can only manage the home directory and the password, but it does not allow me to manage any other aspect of the user, like the password expiry or the password salt and so forth. So this document will tell you what are the limitations of each and every provider that you have here and for all the resources. So is there uh, any questions? Okay, if there is no questions, I would thank you. Thank you all for spending some time to attend this webinar. There will be a recording of this webinar that will be sent to you later on. And, oh, okay, I have more question here. Okay, so do we have factor support for Windows as well? And that is yes. And um, Waypin, okay, is this apply across Okay, I'm still waiting for this question from Waypin. And um, okay, it applies for all supported Windows version only. So basically, um, for 2003, 2008, 2012, Windows 7, Windows 8, and although uh, Windows XP has a deep, very limited deprecated support, so I suggest that you might want to double check on that before proceeding to write your puppet module. But otherwise, the higher the version, the newer the version of puppet, 
it does apply. And for your information, the server that I'm using for this uh, webinar will be the Windows Server 2008 R2. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, are there any other questions that you would like to ask? If there are no other questions, I, again, once again, I will thank you all for attending this webinar. And there will be a recording sent of this webinar sent to all of you. And if you have any more questions, you can send me an email. I will send together with my email and contact details in, all, in case that you have more questions. And thank you. Have a nice day.